Miles Worth. And Goodyear versus Firestone. side by side down the back stretch and Pruitt said no I gotta have my first IndyCar win took the win that's his last and only win in the IndyCars now he's taking a very serious look at Michael Andretti Andretti the back Texaco Hamlin car in the front Pruitt just behind him the Firestone car He's just pulling away from him right there. Well, very definitely the fastest car on the course right now. With the yellows, the average speed is not significant at all at 137 miles an hour, but there is what is. Pruitt is running very close to his fastest lap in the race, and here we are, 79 laps completed by the leader, Alex Zanardi. And Zanardi now is beginning to lose that lead a little bit to Ribeiro. Still right at one second, but Ribeiro's whittled off about a tenth, maybe two tenths now as they came by the last time. Oh, I'm the kind of special, August 5th on ABC. We're back at the Michigan 500, Michigan International Speedway. No changes since we left you. Alex Zanardi just got a glimpse of him, the leader of the race. Andre Ribeiro, young Brazilian, studied law in the second place. Scott Pruitt is sitting in third place. And then Albuquerque Al, Al Unser Jr. Michael Andretti has fallen backwards. Tires may be going away. He sits back in fifth. And in sixth place is Jill DeFerrin, who scored a victory, of course, you saw it here on ABC at Cleveland this year. So a good fight up in the top five, really through the top ten. Though right now they're sitting pretty much on station. Fernandez was a player early on, is now back in ninth place. But he's beginning to work on Christian Fittipaldi, who is eighth just ahead of him. Well, of course, Paul, that can be a set of tires. You just sometimes get a set that's a little bit off, that changes the handling of the car just enough that you don't have that pace. I got to tell you one thing, though. You and I have both done it now. I feel good because you're the star commentator yeah. here. You called Andre Ribeiro, Alex Ribeiro. Well, you made me do it. I made you do you it. made me do it. I used here to comes race. Adrian Fernandez. He gets around Christian Fittipaldi right at the line. So Fernandez moves to eighth. Just don't do that again. I'll be fine. Well, I just wanted people to know <laughs> there was an Alex Ribeiro who I used to race against in Formula 3, and he did Formula 1, and a uh, good friend also from Brazil. Jimmy Vassar has now been lapped by the leaders as we keep track of that points fight. And Gary Gerald, what about Greg Moore? Long, hard, hot work for the crew. Four men surrounding the right rear. They've replaced the hub carrier, the upright, the suspension parts, and most importantly, the half shaft with the wheel bearings. They believe it was a wheel bearing failure. They're still hoping to get this rookie back out there for more miles at Michigan. Jack? Well, Gary, Jimmy Vassar does go a lap down. He's complaining of a loose condition, but a bigger problem for Michael Andretti. He was fading back. Here's the reason why. He's got a battery that seems to be going dead in the car, so they're very, very concerned about it. They're even talking about maybe bringing him onto pit road. Gentlemen? Battery change. Why? We saw that with Little Al two years ago at Miami. As Michael Andretti, you can see him lose a little distance there still as he comes around. Uh, one of the uh, All-American Eagles. Uh, why, if they do have alternators, 
which they do, why would a battery, of course, they're very light, they're very sensitive little batteries. They are, but it could be the connection. It ah. could be just from the vibration or whatever that that connection's just uh, shaking around a little bit. Sometimes a battery won't take all the charge. It still needs some of that charge to run all those electrical systems. Here comes Jill DeFerrin closing on Michael Andretti. Michael is fifth. So many questions, as we already mentioned. Jim Hall, who owns that bright yellow Pennzoil car, has announced his retirement at the end of the season, and there has been so much speculation about DeFerrin and where he will go. Will he go back to Europe, to Formula One? Best indication I have is, boy, when he gets a run on Michael, Michael's got to be having some very serious problems now. In fact, Michael brings her pretty well down, acknowledging the presence of the fact traffic. So we've talked about DeFerrin in Formula One. Here comes Mauricio Guzman along Michael, who's very definitely now off the pace. We've talked about him any number of places in IndyCar. The most recent big rumor circulated last night that maybe Walker Racing would be looking at him. And as we've said, Michael Andretti slowed on the backstretch, well off the pace. And so we have no idea what his problem may be. I'm going to listen to the engine for a second, but I didn't hear anything earlier. Jack, here he comes. And he's coming in, and they are going to try and make this battery change. They are concerned he has shut the engine off. Now, real smart thing on their part, go ahead, add the fuel, change the tires. But the most important part, well, they haven't taken the side pod off yet. Now they go to the right-hand side, and that's where they'll try and make the battery change. But, guys, he's going to go at least one, possibly two, and maybe three laps down. Back to you. Does put me in memory of that situation at, uh, at Miami a couple of years ago with Alan Jr., where they changed the battery not once but several times and it got so it shows you the spirit of some of the team members they started timing the battery changes to see how fast they could do it take a look at how the points are right now with Al Unser Jr. speaking of Al in position well he would take the lead in the points fight three points over Jimmy Bassett that's assuming this race ended now right now there's no indication of any rain and of course we are we are still below a, an official race. We have 93 laps into the record book, so another, uh, well, they get to 125, and in fact, then that would make an official race. DeFerrin makes his move on Little Al as Greg Moore comes out of the pits and returns to the race. Al Unser Jr. and DeFerrin. Little Al didn't like that one. Al comes back in this battle for fourth. DeFerrin stays high. There's some good close wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing with some awful good drivers. And right behind them with that yellow helmet right there, I believe, is Big Mo. Mauricio Guzman. Guzman out of the Pac West team. He runs in sixth, so he's part of that fight. And he finished very strongly, I think, second here for the U.S. 500. Big Mo moves on Little Al. DeFerrin's been able to break it off, and DeFerrin moves underneath Roberto Moreno. And now, Guzman and Unser Jr. battle. Jr., the two-car down low, and Guzman gets him. But now he's going to have to make way around Moreno. Moreno moves up, takes the high line, lets the two faster cars through. Turn four, we've got a problem. Car against the wall, and it is Moreno. Those two cars just came around him, and then Moreno gets the wall. He came up high, I think acknowledging the presence of the two faster cars, and then suddenly was in the wall. Maybe we're beginning to build up some uh, marbles. You don't see any there. Roberto's uh, obviously okay. He's taken off the steering wheel. That's the first sign that he's fine. Now climbs out of the car. He was having a good weekend, too. His family is here. Two little girls are just charming. Great little gals. Taking photographs all around the track. So Roberto Moreno ends his day early. He finished third in the U.S. 500. So he expected there might be something. Getting a help from uh, one of the crew there. Looks like he's bouncing on yeah. one leg. Uh... Maybe he took a pretty good whack on the foot. We'll wait for the official medical opinion. He's got some of the best right there standing at the door. That's Dr. Terry Trammell of Indianapolis, who has been acknowledged time and time again as the best orthopedic surgeon for 
race drivers. And uh, let's take a look on the onboard camera. Maybe we can figure out what happened to Roberto. In turn two, Danny, onto the back straight. Okay, he's just coming down the back straight. He's looking in his mirror. That's what his head was doing there. Lifts a little bit going in there. The faster cars just went underneath him. He's up pretty high. Oh, he just gets up in the gray. Whoa. 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 It's a lot bigger hit than you think. Those walls do not move. But you know what? I think he just got up in the gray. He didn't hear the throttle change. He just kept moving up, and then he realized it was too late and had to come out of it. Well, he saw the faster cars coming, moved up and out of the way. The car is uh, leaking fluids. Uh, most likely that is water. And the question is uh, whether or not anything else, oil, and, and it wouldn't seem that gearbox oil gets on the track there. No, that'll be from the radiator. And what they did here on, below the car is they just put like a little dam there of oil dry to stop the, the fluids leaking down there. So the pits are open. The leaders are all coming in. Zanardi followed by Rivero, by Pruitt, by Jill DeFerrin, and by Mauricio Guzman. Those are the top five. They are all coming in. Hunter Jr. Fernandez, let's go to Jack. Well, Adrian Fernandez coming in very slowly, hits his marks. In the meantime, Alex Zanardi has completed his work. Let's go to Gary Gerald. Gary? Oh, great stopper, Scott Pruitt. He picked up two positions on a 10-second stop a while ago. He just hit our clocks at 10.4, and it looks sensational, Jack. And Gary, a long stop for Adrian Fernandez. They had trouble getting the tires on, but more importantly, they had trouble getting all the fuel in. They accomplished both, but he's at the tail end of the fellas that came on to pit road. Well, this sign, the Patrick Racing Team was the best on pit road, and they got Scott Pruitt out very quickly, right behind Zanardi. So that will pay off tremendously in terms of position when they are ready to go back to green flag. Let's take a look now at Roberto Moreno once again, Danny. Yeah, you see him just get up there in the gray. He can't do anything about it, can't turn. He's just trying to ease it down. Boom, right there, right front wheel goes in there. That's probably why he was limping. If he hit something there, might have come into the cockpit and just got his, got his ankle a little bit. Took the right side of the car pretty hard. Also took out the onboard camera. So we are under yellow at the Michigan 500 for Roberto Moreno. And we'll be back after these messages and a word from our ABC stations. In two weeks, the Indy cars head to the road course at Mid-Ohio. Two-time winner and defending champion Al Unser Jr. challenges a field at the Miller 200. That's Sunday, August 11th, here on ABC Sports. Well, Michael Andretti's trouble seems to have turned from bad to worse, Jack. Well, the option was to come in and change batteries every 20 laps, and that's not Michael Andretti's way, but let's talk about better things. You were really hooked up. What accounts for this, this really competitive speed we're seeing out here this year? Uh, just the cars are getting better and everything, and uh, our car was just as good as it was when we uh, ran here in May, and uh, I think we had a shot at winning the race, especially uh, if we could have went long stints. The longer it went without a yellow, the better off we were. Now, you've measured some of the other competition. Who do you think's the strongest out there right now? Uh, I believe Moore. I think he's got the be better handling of, the, of all of them. You know, I think, uh, although he's out of it, isn't he? Yeah. Oh. Uh, I don't know. I think Pruitt. I think uh, if it goes a long way, I think Zanardi will go loose. Pruitt and Zanardi will go loose, Gary. Another man who'd like to throw his hat into that mix is Al Unser Jr. patiently biding his time at a 12 second pit stop. Car was going a little bit loose so they turned in one turn of wing up front. Roger Penske, we were checking uh, to see if they'd heard any more from their pilots. They're scanning the weather here in lower Michigan. No late updates from them so apparently weather not a prime concern at least for the time being, Paul. Now Greg Moore, by the way, did get his car back out onto the course so he's fallen well, well off of the pace back to 23rd uh, with that long, long uh, stop to change the right rear hub carrier. And there is the order, Roberto Moreno. The report is that he is going to be released from the hospital. He's sore, but he's gonna be okay. Paul, I gotta tell you, you know, at the beginning, uh, you and I were talking and we picked uh, Parker Johnstone.